Stay as close as you can, please. In the reign of Henry VIII, when the monasteries in England were dissolved and the occupants tortured, beheaded in public or murdered secretly, some went into hiding to worship as they pleased. It is the decaying bodies and skeletons of these religious martyrs that you will see on your tour. These catacombs are dangerous and I must warn you to stay with me and not lose your way. Please keep close together. My brooch. Hmm? I must have dropped it somewhere. <sighs> Thank you. Well, which way shall we go? Well, it's a toss-up. Let's try this way. Dead end. Sorry, wrong guess. Well, there's no way out of here. Let's go back. There's no way out there. Who are you? Where did you come from? All in good time. Look, how do we get out of here? All in good time. I'm in a hurry. It can wait. Well, I really can't wait. I have an appointment. Sit. All of you, please sit down. Sit down. I assure you, I have a purpose. What purpose? Why did you come in here? I don't know. I was just driving by and... Something made me. And what are your plans when you leave here? Plans? Plans.
to Joanne, the best wife in the world. Love from Richard. And a big kiss. Darling, Mommy will be right up. interrupt this program for a special announcement. A man described as a homicidal maniac has escaped from the hospital for the criminally insane. He is six foot three inches tall, 210 pounds, dark eyes, bald, and may be wearing a Santa Claus costume taken from a shop in Burley. All residents of the county are warned to be on the lookout for this man and to phone the police if they see him. We now continue our program of carols for Christmas Eve. Away 
existence. I have no int... Hadn't you? And you? I'm on my way home to see my wife and children. And then? Hmm? And then? And then? Set. Must you go tonight, Carl? Can't you leave it till the morning? No, I'm afraid I can't. My appointment's in the morning. I'll have to drive all night to make it. When will you be back? I, uh, I don't know. We'll have to see how it works out. I'll, um, I'll phone you. Did you say good night to the kids? No, I was just going to. Good night, Daddy. Goodbye, darling. Don't forget to ring me when you get there. I will. Goodbye, darling. Bye. Drive carefully. Yes, right. The removal men came this morning. Yeah, well, so I see. Should all be there by the time we get there. Yeah. Shame to give up a night flat like this. Yes, I know that, darling. But we've both had to give up quite a bit, haven't we? I love you, Susan. You know that, don't you? meet someone and suddenly that's it. I kiss my kids tonight and... and... Oh, for hell's sake. I mean, it will be worth it, won't it, for both of us? Of course it will. You are tired. Let me drive.
sorry. Bad dream. Look out! Susan. Darling. <laughs> What's the matter? Oh. Pull yourself together. What's the matter? Come on now. out of my mind. What's happened? The furniture. I don't understand. How did... I brought it back. After the crash. Huh? And I was blinded. Blinded? And Carl was killed. Huh? Two years ago. Sorry, bad dream.
So that is why you were in a hurry? To leave your wife and children? What do you mean? How do you... Who are you? I assure you, I have a purpose. What sort of game are you playing? Game? You're trying to frighten us in some way. What do you want? To show you something. Something in your own mind. Something you are capable of doing. I don't want to know. Oh, but you must know. You must. My wife's name is Helen, Mary Helen Grimsdyke. I always call her Helen. It's a nice name, isn't it? <laughs> bye bye then. Come on, Mark. Come on, Julie. Come sit here. Bye bye, Mark. Bye bye, bye. Julie. <laughs> Two little dicky birds sitting on a wall. One named Peter, one named Paul. Fly away, Peter. Fly away, Paul. Come back, Peter. Come back, Paul. That's it. <laughs> you think you could do that? What are you looking at? Grimsdyke, of course. His usual shell out to the kids. He does it every year on his birthday. I don't know how you stand it. Stand what? Living across the road from that man. He's a rubbish collector. A dustman. Places an eyesore. The toys he gives those kids, he finds in the rubbish heap and repairs. Why doesn't he sell out? I've made him offers. He's... He's sentimental about that old dump. Says he and his wife have lived there for their whole married life and now he wants to die there. Just as she did. Well, it ruins the neighborhood and depreciates the value of our property. The inside must be like a pigsty. He owns the place free and clear. There's nothing we can do about it. Bye-bye. See you tomorrow. Shut the gate. Bye-bye. Isn't there? What on earth have you been doing? Somebody's just made an awful mess of Mr. Baker's garden. Poor Grimsdyke's neighbor. He was so proud of his prize roses. My prize roses. Years of hard work. It's Grimsdyke's dogs for sure. This is too much. I'd like to make an official complaint. Uh, but you mustn't take them away. They're, they're my friends. Sergeant. Please. It's a court order and they don't have licenses. Oh, I couldn't afford licenses. 
Sergeant, please. Darling, are you there, darling? Are you there, darling? Can you hear me? Can you hear me? Is there any anything you wish to tell me? Who oh, too? I just think it over, Councillor Ramsay. Grimsdyke's due to retire in two years. He's done his job well. There's no reason why the town council He's should... too old. Don't you think a younger man? He'd lose his retirement pay. And save the town some money. I do believe he's out of a job. Hmm. Oh. Flies a little wilted, aren't they, my dear? God bless you. Plenty more in the garden. I'll get you some tomorrow. Money now, hadn't we? <laughs> hey, look, Helen, look who's come back, our little Jamie. Oh, that's wonderful. You're our only friend, huh? You and the children? We thought it might be neighbourly to, to let you know what was going on. It's very kind of you to draw our attention to this, Mr. Elliot. It's so difficult to know what one's children get up to when they're out of one sight. After all, last year I remember. You can tell from looking at his house what a filthy old man he is, constantly filling it with children. <laughs> Heaven knows what his motivations are. Now, don't forget what I said. Just stay away from him. But, Mummy, he's such a nice old man. Don't argue with me. You're not to see him again, ever. Why don't you go and play in our garden? And don't take any more sweets from him. Carrying rubbish all day? His hands must be filthy. You and your Mr. Grimsdyke. Now, remember, I don't want you to go anywhere near him. Oh, Mum. And that's final. I don't understand it. Everyone was so kind. Now there's no work, no children, no one to make toys for. Oh, never mind. We've always got each other, haven't we, my dear? Hmm. Yes. 
sure of that bit. Just one more turn of the screw. And he'll sell his property for next to nothing. What's on your mind? Valentine's Day. It's just two weeks away. So? We'll send him Valentine's. From everyone in town. Lots of mail for you today, Mr. Gimstack. Look, Bonnie, thank you very much. Oh, oh very kind. My dear. Look, oh, it's not even Christmas, is it? Not that it makes any difference if it is or not. I wouldn't be writing to me. Let's see how. It's a Valentine card. You're my only sweetheart, will this be? <laughs> Noisier children, loud as a bell, pungent as perfume, but you only smell. Hmm? Noisier children, loud as a bell, pungent as perfume, but you only smell. I don't think I like that. Let's see what we have here. A tree is beautiful, if its owner prunes it. But our town isn't, because your presence through it. Oh. Some people live in the country. Some people live in the town. Why don't you do us a service? Jump in the river. What's Grimstag been doing to that mongrel? He hasn't stopped whining for a week. You know, come to think of it, I haven't seen Grimstag for days. Not since Valentine's Day. I can't be far away if the door's open. This place is spotless. I thought it would be filthy. upon his children's children. For as much as it hath pleased almighty God of his great mercy to take unto himself the soul of our dear brother, Arthur Edward Grimsdyke, here departed. We therefore commit his body to the ground. Earth to earth, ashes to ashes, dust to dust. In sure and certain hope of the resurrection to eternal life through our Lord Jesus Christ. It was kind of you to pay for the burial. It was the least I could do. He was a neighbor. What's that? Valentine's cards. 
The ones left over from last year. When... She must be a year ago. Today. It's Valentine's Day. February the 14th. A year ago exactly. to bed. See you in the morning. You were mean and cruel right from the start. Now you really have no... What am I doing here? You'll see. Well, that's it, Ralph, I'm afraid. It's all gone. Everything. More than everything. You have debts. I did warn you, didn't I, not to use money that had been entrusted to you. The risks were far too great. Risks? The gains could have been enormous. 
What do I do now? Well, you have two choices. First, bankruptcy. And according to you, that would be dishonorable, wouldn't it? Oh, come on, let's face it. You've done dishonorable things in your life before, in your business life. Hard, ruthless, and perhaps even cruel. Yes, to build up the Jason Empire, sometimes I had to be. No one has to be. I did. Oh, it's easy to talk. But I had to fight my way up the hard way. If people got hurt, they got hurt. But I always paid my debts. No, I'm not going into bankruptcy. Well, if you intend to try and pay off your debts, you'll have to start selling things. Things of value. Properties, your paintings, everything. My house. All the beautiful things I've acquired during the years. It's the only way. I won't do it. I'm afraid you'll have to. So there's nothing else for it. We have to sell them. Oh, I know it's a blow. Our whole life's in them. Everything we've collected all over the world. I remember that one. We got it in that strange shop in Hong Kong when you were selling guns to. Do you remember what the little man in the shop said to us when he sold it to us? Yes. Use it. Use it wisely. I wonder what he meant by that. Ralph, have you, have you ever seen this writing that's inscribed on the bottom of this statuette? Writing? Hmm. Yes, here at the base. Three wishes I give and no more to each owner of me, so keep score. Each wish will come true, so take care what you do. I can't read the rest, but the last word is deplore. What does it all mean? Use it wisely. If only it could give us three wishes. That storybook nonsense. It reminds me of a tale I once read. What was it? We could pay all our debts. The monkey's paw, that's what it was. I wish. I read it when I was at school. I wish for lots and lots of money. Oh, no, no. Too late, I already have. And I've just remembered what happened at the end of the story. Well, you said yourself it was just a story. Like our three wishes. Hello. Oh, hello, Charles. I'd like you to come down to my office. Right now? Yes, straight away. It's very important. It's about money. I'd like you to come straight away. I'll be right there. That's Charles. He wants me to go and see him right away. He said something about money. Money? Maybe our wish will come true after all.
Yes, yes, speaking. I'm sorry to tell you, sir, but your client, Ralph Jason, has been killed in a car crash. In his car? Yes, on a road about ten miles from his home. Well, uh, have you told Enid, M Mrs. Jason, yet? No, not yet. We found some letters from you in his pocket. They indicate that you're not only his solicitor, but a close friend of the family. We thought it better that you bring things. Yes, yes. Yes, of course. Leave it to me. I'll tell her. They found him in the wreckage of his car. He'd obviously lost control, skidded. <laughs> Enid, this may not be the best moment to talk about this, but uh, it may alleviate some of your other worries. You realize this accident makes you a rich woman. Rich? Ralph's insurance. He always carried a large policy with a double indemnity against accident. Charles, I, I wish for lots and lots of money. Ralph warned me not to. No, that's a coincidence. No, it's sure. no coincidence. That statuette. It gave us three wishes. I used one of them to wish for lots and lots of money. Now, I'm going to wish for Ralph back. Do you know the story of the monkey's paw? That's the story of the old couple who are given a monkey's paw, which entitles them to three wishes. They wish for money. And they get the money because their son is killed in a machine in his factory, crushed, in it. You mustn't wish Ralph back. Why not? Well, in the story, this mother wishes her son back, and he does come back, but in the condition in which he died, mutilated, mangled, torn. Careful not to make the same mistake. I shall wish that Ralph were back as he was before the accident. I wish that Ralph were back exactly as he was immediately before the accident. No, don't look. His body was mangled in the crash. Mangled? It wasn't mangled. Mr. Jason died of a heart attack at the wheel. I wish to bring him back as he was immediately before the accident. But he was already dead. Dead from a heart attack, so the accident didn't kill him. Please go away. Please. Leave me alone. I want to be alone with him, please. Only one more wish. Only one. I mustn't waste it. I must be careful. Please, please. I wish Ralph were alive now. I don't want him to die ever. I want him moving, breathing, talking, alive. Now, forever. Ah! 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 What happened? What have you done? I wished him alive again, forever. But don't you realize he's been embalmed? <laughs> 
His brains are filled with embalming fluid burning into him. Oh, no! I need to do something now. Oh, for God's sake, Eve, help me. No, no, we need to Wished him alive forever. You can't kill him. Every piece of him is alive still. Alive and suffering. Well, what did you see? What did he see? What's more important is what you will see. Well, who are you? Well, what do you want with us? To warn you of what may happen. I don't care about your warnings. I want to get out of here. Very well. But you should heed the warning. Mr. Rogers? Major Rogers. You might show me to my quarters and have something up my kit in, will you? Shane, here. Oh. 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 Goodbye. There were pictures on the wall. Where'd they go? Personal property of your predecessor, sir. Well, you must get some more. I'll go down to London and have a look around the galleries. Yeah, where are the men? Uh, the patients. They've gone to lunch, sir. You mean dinner, sir, Charles? Bon appetit, Mr. Carter. Thank you, Harry. Good morning. My name is Rogers, Major William Rogers. I've been appointed your new superintendent here and take up my duties today. I've had considerable experience in dealing with men as an officer in the army. I promise you I will do this job to the best of my ability. I hope we'll all get along well. If there are any complaints, I shall be pleased to deal with them in my office at any time. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Shane. Oh. Well, Shane, after I made a few changes, I think we're going to like it here.
stone cold. It's always like that now. <laughs> All right, old boy. All right. I'll get you an extra blanket. asked me to come and talk to you. Yes. It's about the heating. It's been very cold this past few nights. We wondered if you... For reasons of economy, the heating is now turned off each evening at twenty hundred hours. We'll all be in bed by then. After all, there's no point in staying up. You can't see anything. The beds are cold. There aren't enough blankets. I'm trying to run this place as efficiently and as economically as I can. I'm afraid the current budget does not include the cost of new blankets. Do you know anything about blind people? No, I can't say I do until I took over this job. But I was in the army for over 20 years and I learned to handle all kinds of men there. With all due respect, sir, we are not soldiers. And blind people are not like people with sight. We have lost one sense. But the loss of that one sense only tends to sharpen the other. Do you know what that means? We feel things more acutely. If food is bad, it tastes worse to us. If a room is dirty, we feel every speck. If an insect scurries across the floor, we hear it. And if it's cold, we feel the cold more. Why don't you sell that painting and buy us fuel or extra blankets? I was not aware that the administration of expenditure for this establishment has been handed over to you, Mr. Carter. Good morning. Sorry, Dad, there ain't no more. No second helping? Well, rations were cut, you see. Superintendent says he's doing the best he can with prices so high. It's customary to knock on the door of a private office. What do you want? Can't you see I'm having my lunch? What is it? Nice juicy steak? Well, we get nothing but slop. Well, I'll do the best I can for you, within the limits of the budget provided for me. But you eat meat and drink wine? I am the officer in charge. This isn't the bloody army. Mr. Carter, in the kingdom of the blind, even the one-eyed man is king. Oh, <laughs> 
Realize it's gone midnight. Doctor. Who wants a doctor? It's Greenwood, sir. Well, can't it wait till the morning? He's ill, sir. Very ill. Well, I suppose I better take a look. Shane, wait. Blanket. Which one is Greenwood? The man is dead.
Shane. Shane? What the hell do you think you're doing? Go back to your rooms, all of you. It's our turn to give the orders now. Major Rogers. Sir. Well, what, what is it? What, what, what do you want? my dog. Seems to be getting hungry, Major Rogers. Oh, feed him, please. Please feed him. All in good time. Yes, but you must feed him. He, 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 he'll be dangerous. He'll, he'll go wild. Berserk. I know, Major Rogers.
What are you doing out there? You'll see soon enough. to eat. Please, please. I haven't had any to eat or drink for over two days. Please, please. Well, at least feed my dog, please. He'll be fed all right. Major Rogers. What is all this? I'm on my way to a new job. 
I don't know why I stopped here. I do. Now you may go. I wasn't warning you, but telling you why you are here for all eternity. Perhaps you? 